Hello friends, I'm Ram Lakshmanan. In this session, let's talk about thread local. Okay. See, there are different types of variable scopes. There is, there is a local variable, which is only visible within a method. There is a member variable, which is only visible within your object. And then there's a static variable, which is visible within the classes, right? Within the class. Thread local is in kind of a different scope. So let's, that's what we're going to discuss now. Okay. So let me open up a sample program. Okay. So, uh, friends, here is a, a very, very hypothetical, uh, simple program just for our discussion. Okay. Here, look at this. There is this uh, class called no thread local demo. It has a main method, which is an entry point to this uh, program. So this main method is calling a method one on a controller, on a controller object. Right. Uh, so now if you see this method one, it's just saying this method one is invoked. And it is calling a method two on a manager class. Right? Now, if I go to the manager class, the manager class, it says uh, it's being invoked and it is invoking a data access object method three. Right? And now if I come in here, here there is this data access object which has a method three and here it's just saying it has been invoked. Right? It's just a simple program which says there is a controller class at the top and then there's a manager and then there's a DAO. So each and everyone is invoking them, right? That's what it is. Okay, I want to ask you this question. Let's say I want to initialize a variable, some an integer variable here in this no thread local demo, okay? And then I want to access it in this uh, DAO object, right? How can I do that? So let me repeat the question. So here I want to initialize an integer variable. And then I want to access this in, in that DAO object. How can I do that in Java programming language? There are a few options to do. Do you guys want to say how to do it? If it is static, then we can call it by using class name. Okay, so you are saying uh, here, you will define it as a static variable, and then you're going to call it uh, in the DAO, right? Yes. Okay. Any other options other than that? If it is not on static, then we can create object and we can call. Then you are saying it, you're going to declare it as a member variable and then you're going to invoke, okay? okay? Yes. Okay, any other options? Okay, friends, if you're going to go for this uh, static uh, variable or if it's an object with a member variable approach, that means what's going to happen, there's going to be only one variable, right? If multiple threads are going to come and invoke it, it's not going to be having a thread safe value, right? You see, if it's a static integer, if multiple threads goes and manipulate that integer, it's not going to be having a, it's not going to be thread safe, right? It, the values can be manipulated by multiple threads. So other option is you can pass that as an local variable, right? What I can do to this method one, I can pass that integer parameter right? I can define it here within this main method and I can pass this integer variable. And within this method one, I can pass the same integer variable to method two. And then method two, I can pass the same integer variable to method three. And then method three, I can manipulate it. Right? Is it making sense? This is an another approach. But first of all, is this making sense? What I'm saying now? Passing it as a local variable. Yes, sir. As a parameter. Right? So, but in this case, this is very simple, right? Because there's only three classes in this program, so it's very easy. I can man, I can uh, pass that as an argument. But let's say if it's your application, real-world application, there's going to be multiple classes and multiple methods, and your transaction has to flow through all the methods. Refactoring them and touching them is going to be a little tricky and little hard, isn't it? Yes, sir. Yeah. So this is where the thread local comes to into help for us. Okay. Let's look at this, the thread local. If I'm going to redo this with the thread local, how it's going to look like. See, I'm defining this thread local as an integer. So here I can define whatever object it's going to be. It can be a map, it can be an object, or it can be anything, right? Here, within this met main method, here I'm saying uh, setting this value to be 10. Okay, I'm setting this value to be 10. And now here I'm invoking method one. And this method one, 
I'm not doing anything. Uh, it, it remains as is, this and this on. The controller does not have to change anything. And then now if you go to this method two, here also I don't have, I'm not doing any changes. It is remaining as is. But now if you see in this method three, here we have this thread local integer get int value. So now I'm reading that value from the thread local integer. But, and then now I'm saying plus plus and I'm printing it. Right, now let me execute this program and then let's see what happens, right? Let me go ahead and execute this program. Look at this. There is this controller method one invoked, method two invoked, and now in DAO, it's printed as 11. So without changing the value, without modifying any method signatures, method parameters, we are able to read the value in the in method three, and then we are incrementing it and we are printing it. Making sense, this one. Yes. Do you guys have any questions on this? So do we need to initialize that uh, thread local in static final? No. See, okay, okay. I see your question. You can, you can set it to uh, uh, a value. There is a way to initialize the value. Uh, you can do that. But if you do that, all, see what I'm doing now in this case is, it's a, it's a good question actually, Sai. So what here I'm doing, I mean, I say set 10, I'm setting it on the thread. I'm setting this uh, thread local integer on the thread. So for, when this thread moves on to method two, method three, this value is coming along within the thread. And, and now when it goes to method three, there I'm in, there I'm executing it. There I'm reading it and then I'm executing it, right? So if you set it, if you can initialize the thread local to some initial value, but that means whenever any thread starts, it's going to start with that initial value. So any questions? Uh, so say, say suppose we have a two threads, okay? So can I read this? Thread local uh, of thread one, uh, I mean, thread two, uh, can thread two read uh, this thread local uh, of thread one? Yeah, okay, that's a very good question. In fact, that, that, that goes on to the next example that I wanted to discuss now. Look at this, guys. Here, look, here there is this class called two thread local, thread local two threads demo, right? Here, look what I'm doing. In this main method, I'm creating two threads, thread one and thread two, okay? Look what is this thread one is doing. <clears throat> in thread one, I'm setting this value to be 10, right? This thread local value to be 10, I'm setting it. Whereas in this thread two, I'm setting it to 100. See guys, this is where the thread local becomes very interesting and very powerful. Say if it's a static variable or it's a member variable, when you set it, the value gets reset value gets reset right but now let's see my method one i didn't take i didn't do any changes here it is remaining as is and now let's go to this method two here also i didn't make any changes look what i'm doing in method three here i'm saying i'm reading that value incrementing it and printing it okay so now let's go ahead and execute this program so when i execute this program let's see what happens method the thread one is initialized with value 10 and uh, thread two is initialized with value 100. So now let's execute this. Okay, when I executed, you see both the threads started with the controller and then they, the thread, they moved on to method two. And then after that, look at the final statement, what's happening? The thread two is get printing the value 101 and thread one is printing it as 11. So each thread has its own thread local integer right did okay, it answer okay. your question yes okay so friends as you can see this is very powerful way right uh, this is very powerful mechanism that is without uh, uh, i'm setting it on the thread and then I, I can read it at any point in the code right so 
what are some of the advantages you get with this? So say, suppose I want to, um, th there are a lot of uh, practical use cases. Maybe we'll talk about it in a second um, as a video sequel to this, right? But one very powerful thing what we get from here is, I don't need to do any refactoring in the code, right? If I want to pass some variables, that is one advantage, right? And also it just becomes very useful in the unit testing scenarios and all, which we'll talk a little bit later. But friends, uh, as they as it goes in that uh, Spider-Man movie, there is a saying, with great power, there comes great responsibility. When you use thread locally, you have to be very, very cautious. Otherwise, it can result in very nasty art to debug production problems, right? There are some disadvantages to this. It's a very sharp edged uh, instrument, this one. So what are some of the things? Say, suppose, if this thread, that is, that is a thread one, it is now going and in, invoking an another thread two. That means when it's going to invoke another thread two, this thread local variables will not be carried over from this thread one to thread two. It's not going to happen. So, so that means you need to make sure to pass, you need to write program to pass this, to copy this thread local from thread one to the thread two. You need to do that manually, right? Say, suppose I developed a program, it was application is going through fine. And later because of uh, some performance reason, I want to make it, uh, I want to have a span of multiple threads. That means you have to go and redo this, right? And also the another thing, some of the disadvantages are the code readability and maintainability, right? So now let's say I am, very deep down in the hierarchy. And then now if I'm seeing, oh, this, there is this thread local thing, then I have to see where all it is being referenced. And then you have to go and change it there, right? Because if it's a local variable or a member variable, I can directly go and it's being declared here. I can, it's easy for me to understand what's going on. So this is a little bit tricky to do it, right? But of course, it, it has very powerful constructs as well. So we'll, we'll talk about its practical usages in some real world applications in the next sequel, okay? Uh, any questions, friends, you have right now? No, no. No. Okay. So is this making sense? Is this making sense, this one? Yes, yes. Yes, yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you guys. We'll meet you in yet another interesting session. Thank you very much.